Pele is now an octogenarian, yet the wider world was introduced to him as a fresh-faced 17-year-old at the 1958 World Cup. Younger viewers might point us in the direction of his current guys, a man with an exceedingly debatable goal count in the face of other excellence, Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo may have accolades aplenty, the argument may be now Messi versus Ronaldo, but the argument once was Pele versus Maradona. Pele is alone in some respects, he is the youngest player to play in a World Cup final, the youngest player to score in a World Cup final, and as a result, the youngest player to win in a World Cup final. He is the only footballer to have won three World Cups, something that is almost guaranteed never to be eclipsed. In spite of injuries forcing his premature retirement from the 1962 and 66 World Cups, this was a testament of how good he was that, at the ages of 21 and 25, he was being kicked out of matches based solely on how good he was. Injury almost stopped him from competing at the 1970 World Cup, the final World Cup he would play with as a part of the Selecao. His final act almost at a World Cup was to lay the ball on a plate for Carlos Alberto in the final against Italy, an assist for one of the greatest goals ever scored. Yet there are still some that doubt Pelé and his 757 goals in 812 games based on the fact that, unlike Diego Maradona, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi, they have proved themselves in Europe. But let's transplant Pelé into Europe, into the modern era no less, where the cream of the crop in Brazilian football simply have to play in Europe and see how well he stands up in the current era of football. Before we slide the doors open, gauge the effects of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books, here's how you can join the team and support the channel. We've got a Patreon page, that is patreon.com forward slash whatifootball. You'll get access to all of our bonus content. For example, this week's offerings alongside your lovely what if suggestions in our what if mailbag and the what if weekly football podcast are the following. In the Great Games podcast, we have a fantastic World Cup qualifier from England in 2001. And in the Head to Head podcast, we're pitting two World Cup losers, the Netherlands of 1974 and Brazil of 1982. Where are Brazil as a footballing nation? Well, they recovered from the Maracanazo in 1950, with Vava and Garincha steering them through the latter stages of the 1958 World Cup before both combined in a 4-2 win in the final over Sweden. In 1962, they were fortunate to scrape through the groups, but then Garincha came alive in the knockout stages with wins over England, Chile and Czechoslovakia. A humiliating group stage exit in 1966 was followed by a new breed of players, including Carlos Alberto, Gersinho and Rivellino, who fired Brazil to a third World Cup in 1970. By the time that Santos received two new academy players in the form of Pelé and Neymar, Brazil have five World Cups to their name, after triumphs in 1994 and 2002. Pelé and Neymar made their debuts at Santos in 2009 and would win everything there is to win in Brazil. First came the Campeonato Paulista, a glut of regional titles and the 2010 Copa do Brasil. They lit up the Serie A to such an extent that Dunga was petitioned for their involvement at the 2010 World Cup. He resists and Brazil crash out to the Netherlands in the quarterfinals. The Copa Libertadores in 2011 would be their announcement to the world, Pelé and Neymar combining for 11 goals in Group 5 and would score all three of the goals in the second leg of the Libertadores final against Peñarol. Both Neymar and Pelé would be selected for the under-20 South American Championships that year and it would be a massacre. Neymar netted 9, Pelé 12 and in the final they demolished Uruguay 8-0. But finally had earned their call up to the national team in time for the 2011 Copa America. They ran riot in the groups before Pelé's sole strike versus Paraguay booked them a place in the final four. Venezuela would be thrashed in the semi-finals and then penalties were needed against Uruguay. The race was on to sign the kids from Santos. They combined to win another Libertadores, beating Boca Juniors 4-1 on aggregate in the final before being a part of the Olympic front line that also featured Oscar, Lucas Maurer, Pato and Hulk. A 4-2 win over Mexico in London bolstered Pele's trophy cabinet once more. Everyone wanted a share of Pele and Neymar at their clubs, but there was only really two names at the forefront, Barcelona and Real Madrid. Santos and Neymar's dad made an absolute bucket load of money, the latter of which aged in both deals as Neymar signed for Barcelona and Pelé went to Real Madrid. The money splurged on Pelé means that Gareth Bale has to stay at home and with Daniel Levy being a tough negotiator and no other club being able to afford him, he stays at Tottenham. Bale would miss out on Champions League football once but fired them back into the competition in 2015 as the signing of Deli Alli and Harry Kane rising through the ranks as well as the likes of Eric Dyer, Kieran Trippier, Toby Alderweireld and Son Heung-min all bolstered the team. 
They would win at the Battle of the Bridge in 2016 and press on to win their first Premier League, despite the distraction of a Champions League quarter-final with Real Madrid. Bale's semi-final performance at the Euros that summer did little to ward clubs off from signing him, but with trophies now apparent at White Hart Lane, both Gareth Bale and Harry Kane signed six-year deals. In the Champions League, they were competitive, only getting eliminated by the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona in the quarter-final, then the following semi-final. And with five games to play in the 2016-17 Premier League season, Tottenham were still invincible and met Arsenal in the North London derby. Harry Kane would bag a hat-trick in a 4-0 win, but Tottenham wouldn't win that golden Premier League, beaten by West Ham as they attempted to juggle yet another Champions League semi-final. Like in 1961 though, Spurs would win the league and cup double. Unfortunately for Spurs, PSG wouldn't sign Neymar, which also meant they had money in the back of the sofa, freed up for Gareth Bale. £150 million later, he was theirs. Back in Spain, back to Madrid, Pelé began the season cold, bench warming for Karim Benzema in the 2013-14 season, but soon he found himself forced into the squad. He came off the bench to score a hat-trick in the Clasico in March in a 4-4 draw, before scoring two more against Barcelona in the Copa del Rey final. By the end of the season, Real had become reliant on Pelé's goals. His winners at Valencia and Valladolid put them level on points with their Champions League final opponents Atletico Madrid. He would score in a 3-1 win over Espanyol on the final day, but all ears were pointed towards a new camp, where Barcelona led Atletico Madrid through Alexis Sanchez. Diego Godin would head Atletico Madrid back on level terms, but La Liga was Real Madrid's, and so was the Champions League, after Pelé's double in the final. That summer, the World Cup was hosted by Brazil. Pelé and Neymar, of course, the poster boys. They rattled through the group with a 100% record, whilst Pelé scored three goals in wins over Chile and Colombia. Neymar would go down with a back injury ahead of the semi-final against Germany and they were missing Thiago Silva for the crucial contest, but they had Pele on top form. Thomas Muller would open the scoring for Germany, but by the time Andreas Schürrle thundered in a second, Pele had scored a hat-trick and Oscar made it four. Brazil were firm favourites to beat Argentina in the final. Pele, after extra time, headed in the only goal to win Brazil's sixth World Cup and net him the golden boot, the golden ball and, of course, the Ballon d'Or. The success wouldn't stop on an international front. Copa Americas in successive years meant more trophies for Pele, another golden boot and three Ballons d'Or in a row. Neymar, alongside new Barcelona recruit Luis Suarez, had cooked up their own dominance, replying to Real Madrid's treble with a treble of their own in 2015, before another Champions League final in 2016 where they met Real Madrid. Pele would score an eye-watering 67 goals that season and, unfortunately for Barcelona, the last of which was the winning goal in the Champions League final. The final would be replayed in 2017, only for the same result, Pele and Ronaldo converging on four goals in Cardiff. Neymar remained at the new Camp and that meant that Felipe Coutinho remained in Liverpool, which also meant that after Barcelona captured the 2018 Champions League final over Real Madrid, they would sign Virgil van Dijk. As such, Manchester City would dominate in England over Liverpool, whilst Barcelona won three La Liga titles of their own between 2018 and 2020, as well as a second and third Champions League in a row against Spurs in 2019 and Bayern Munich in 2020. Cristiano Ronaldo wouldn't leave for Juventus and then Manchester United, as Kylian Mbappe made the switch to Real Madrid. The Clasicos of the 2020s was set. Messi, Neymar and Suarez versus Ronaldo, Pele and Mbappe.